What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to This League. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. On this episode of This League, holy shit, Marty, the Suns are going to the finals. Marty was so lit over this. He said the Western Conference Finals took a chug, a full bottle of champagne to the face and was like, oh shit, it's actually the finals. Holy fuck. <laughs> First time in 28 years. Uh, of course, we also have the Eastern Conference Finals still going on, which we really don't care nearly as much about because we are a Suns podcast. Blazers are on my shit list. We'll talk about why even more. Uh, Bucks will be heading to a game six, I think. Uh, and we have a, an issue with Giannis's health. So, but again, officially a Suns podcast. Marty, let's drop the beat. All right. Holy fuck. Feels like 1993 all over again. Marty, you were a little baby. Yeah, I was, I was two years old. I uh, don't uh, have any memory of it, but uh, now we're going to the goddamn finals and it feels pretty fucking incredible. So the thing that I loved was the Tuesday hit piece, sort of, <laughs> on Chris Paul. Uh -huh. Chris Paul <laughs> is the problem. The, the Suns have a pressing issue and his name is Christopher, oh, I forget his Emmanuel. name, Emmanuel Paul. <laughs> Please, someone fix him. All the haters are like, I don't know, man. Feels like this is something the Clippers can overcome. Devin Booker's got a broken nose. Chris Paul is showing his age. COVID, COVID, COVID. Uh, contusion on the shoulder. They're not healthy. Aiden looks passive. Like, yeah. Aiden's no longer his aggressive self. He's not shooting 70% anymore. What's going on? The sky is falling. And then the Clippers cut it to seven. That was scary. That scary, was scary. Scary, scary, scary. And what we saw was maybe the greatest Chris Paul half we've ever seen in history. He was seven for eight from three, which he hasn't shot a three with any force or with any <laughs> lift in his leg since like the first round. Yeah, I mean, I mean he hit a few. He hit a few in the Denver series, but yeah, no, it was crazy. So I didn't even realize like how much he had scored until the game was over. Like when I looked and was like, oh, Chris Paul had forty points. Like what the fuck? I mean, yeah, I mean seven of eight from three. Like you'll do that. You'll put up some some crazy points. The but Chris Paul disrespect and was it, at an all time high last night. Yeah, too. no, and it came from within our fan base too. Everyone saying like, oh, like Chris Paul, like he he's not being his aggressive self. Like he's not getting Aiden involved. Like blah blah blah. And like, fuck them. I, I I mean, the one thing I've said this whole time is that Chris Paul is like literally the last thing I will ever be worried about ever. And he came up for me. He came ice up water, for me. Ice water in his veins. And you know what? Fuck everyone who was hating on Chris Paul. Fuck everyone trying to get into Chris Paul's head and trying to get into his body, into his space. I mean, literally you had Clippers being like, let him shoot. They left him wide, wide open. Yeah. And he was like, whap, whap. Wap. That might have been the reason he got going. It was like fucking <laughs> shoot around out there. Yeah, they gave him the Marcus Morris treatment. Gave him the Marcus which, Morris treatment. Oh, uh, Not... that was so awesome seeing him walk away. Fuck him. Uh, fuck him. Jay Crowder said this. <laughs> we knew. So the, the big thing, obviously, Pat Beverly all up in everyone's grill. Chris Paul giving everyone a taste of their own medicine with the flop with the Marcus Cousins fucking loved that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just you got to. Well, the tweets on that is uh, a. I mean, I hate to be this guy, but like the Clippers got every single touch foul like ever, and it took until they like, didn't get to the free throw line until 16 minutes into the game. Yeah, no, well, there wasn't a single foul call. Not a single foul call until 16 yeah, minutes like, into okay, the game. Okay, Chris Paul flopping. That's your problem with this game. Okay, fuck off. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so Pat Beverly inexplicably shoves Chris Paul because Chris Paul was talking that shit, talking his shit. Like, y'all about to go home. Bye-bye. I want to know what he said I so I want to know what he said, too. We're going to find out, Marty. We're going like, to find out. What broke Pat Bev? What broke him? So Jay Crowder said, that's when we knew we broke them. And then Chris Paul said, there's no better than the sign of defeat during that moment. <laughs> Once we knew we got the game won, we knew at some point they would break. I think that's basically what you saw. You saw a breaking point with one of their leaders in that locker room. That's a great feeling to have, especially in the great in the playoffs. Such a great feeling. Petty. That is the ultimate sign of petty. That is how I am. I love there's nothing better than that because 
what's the point of winning if you can't talk shit? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you only get so many opportunities to like really talk that shit and like, yeah. I fucking, I fucking love it. I love it. I love Crowder. I love this team. I wanted CP to go a little harder on the Clippers. He didn't though. Like when they were in the trophy presentation, he was like, "I'm still a Clipper." Like blah blah blah. Yeah, Fuck he should have like been like that. Steve Ballmer. Fuck you. Like that's you, that's what I wanted. To everyone but. who called my contract the worst contract in sports, how you like me now? <laughs> yeah, look at look, look at Chris Stapps. Look at that Chris Dabbs contract for a second and then tell me who's got the worst contract in sports. Yeah, also, Steve 25. Ballmer, you discarded me and you kept Doc Rivers' ass. Fuck off. I wasn't the problem. I mean, that's what I yeah. wanted him to say. And, and you screwed over Blake, too. And you screwed over Blake. And honestly, like, you left DeAndre Jordan on an island. DeAndre Jordan's like, I wish I would have left to Dallas until you started circling and stalking me. Yeah, no, I made a point to say fuck you, Steve Ballmer, in my video. I saw that. I loved that. <laughs> I loved that. Not much else to say other than also good morning to everyone except for Frank Kaminsky. What? <laughs> Frank Kaminsky saw the shove and and just love tap Pat Beverly away. If that was Jay Crowder, you can pull up the footage, Marty. If you pull it yeah, up. No, I actually don't know. Chris uh, Paul got shoved to the ground. Uh -huh. Then Frank Kaminsky stood there stunned. He was the closest player to Pat Bev. Looks over to him and kind of go, just kind of like. <laughs> taps him and he just kind of like shoves him away he did nothing you are a nobody on this team you are getting zero minutes on this team you can you can like be Frank. suspended no <laughs> fuck him he needs to have his guys back you can't let someone shove your emotional team leader and the real leader of the team onto the ground for no reason and do absolutely nothing about it well i mean to recap a little bit of son's history we've gotten in trouble for doing that before like that exact thing what do you think? The Suns would be very penalized if Frank Kaminsky yeah, pushed no, him back? What, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I wish back in 07, like, it would have been, like, Pat Burke coming out and, like, going after uh, Robert Ory. But, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I love Frank. So, uh, I'm going to have to go back and uh, rewatch. You're going to have to rewatch that. Also, let's move over to the Clippers. What do we make of Paul George? What do we make of him? I mean, he's the most inconsistent superstar of all time. And I do think he's earned that label, like as dumb as I think the conversation is, what's a star versus a superstar? I do think he's earned that. Uh, but among the players that I do think have earned that, he is the least, maybe the least reliable of anyone that's ever had that title. I said on January, on December 10th, 2020, Paul George, not even a top 20 player getting $40 million a year is so crazy. Then... After his performance in game five, people came out of the woodwork. People save my tweets. Fine. <laughs> fine. They save it. They dig it up. They put it back in my face. And I retweeted it last night. I said what I said. I said what I said. I think Paul George has elevated himself from his game five performance and some of the other performances earlier on in that series, as well as the Utah end of the Utah series yeah. without Kawhi. Yeah. But I can't call him a top 20 guy. I can't, I think he's right at 20, 21. This is what I think. 20 players I'd have over Paul George, spot the lie. You're about to list off 20. Yes. Okay, let's go. Damian Lillard. Sure. Steph Curry. Joel Embiid. Nikola Jokic. Luka Doncic. Jimmy Butler. Bradley Beal. People don't like the Beal one, but I would. Devin Booker. Kyrie Irving. Kevin Durant. James Harden. Kawhi Leonard, and that's with Kawhi Leonard's antics. Okay, how many are we at now? We're almost there. We're at, we're at about 10. No, we're at uh, like 12, 13. Okay. CP3, Anthony Davis, and I don't care, CP3 still. Sure. Anthony yeah. Davis, LeBron James, Jason Tatum, DeAndre Ayton, Giannis, Zion. That's 20. <laughs> I mean, I mean, me personally, I'm not a big list guy. I think I'm, he cra I think he cracks my top twenty, but I is it close? I, but I think I think our sentiment around him as a player is the same. Yeah, like I mean, you just you can't rely on him to go and win a series. You can't like, and I mean, it's unfair a little bit because like no one can really do it on their own besides like LeBron. LeBron's like the only one, and yeah, no, I mean. I don't know. But Reggie Jackson was balling. Marcus Morris 
was Marcus well, Morris I mean, was really the like games five and six. Marcus Morris was really good. He had <laughs> like, 20 I, I hate that man 24. with every inch of myself, but he was really fucking good. The way that it ended with you guys in the Suns and Marcus Morris, not ideal. The more I, the yeah. More uh, I, I mean, I'll die on this anthill. Like, I'll I'll give Ryan McDonough shit for everything, but everyone like tried to say like, oh, like he. He gave them this promise that like they weren't going to trade him. It's like, uh, no, he fucking didn't. Like he he never said that. Like they knew when they signed that like team friendly deal or whatever the fuck was like they knew they could be traded at any time. And then they were because they weren't that fucking good. They weren't Clippers, Marcus Morris and Markeith Morris. Markeith Morris is also not still very good. Well, I like that Marcus. I I, I at least respect Marcus a little more because he was smart enough because, I mean, they're literally identical twins. They have the same DNA. And Marcus was like, OK, I'm going to become like a three point shooter defender guy. And Markeith was like, no, I'm still going to be like a bruiser, like power forward. It's like the difference that, between like- Robin Lopez and Brooke Lopez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To a degree. Yeah. You know what I mean? One guy still stays in the paint. Yeah. One guy has developed a solid three point shot. Yeah. And that's the deal. Robin Lopez, former son. Yeah. Former son. There was a, uh, there was a time there where we kept drafting uh, every uh, like less talented uh, sibling. Like we had uh, we had Blake Griffin's brother. Oh, I for remember a that. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> Taylor. Shout out Taylor Griffin. Come on the pod. Best feel good story of the playoffs. Maybe Reggie Jackson making yeah. two million dollars a year. 17.8 points uh in the playoffs shooting 50% from the field most three point most three pointers of anyone dude was ready to retire dude was ready <laughs> to retire that's what he told Ramona Shelburne and he said I was ready to leave I was ready to give up I thought I was going to retire this last off season he said there were months I didn't even pick up a basketball months months So then uh, at one point, somebody says, Reggie hadn't picked up a basketball in months, his brother says. He was with the crew, and it just happened organically when they were at Paul George's house hanging out. He took a couple of shots in the driveway and was like, I think I love it again. He took a couple of more shots, and I could tell when I was talking to him, oh, yeah, that's it. You're ready again. Wow. I love it. I'm a, I'm a big Reggie Jackson guy. I hope he gets paid. Uh, everyone was kind of roasting him like, oh, like you're going to get like 120 million. Like, yeah, I mean, if he signs a five year deal, yeah, it's probably going to be worth 120 million. That's what, so he that's, a, what, that's what guards get paid these days. <laughs> like, I don't think he'll get that. But this is what he had to say after the game. I think we have a, maybe not a, 120, a but yeah. So this is what Reggie Jackson had to say after their loss to the Suns. Basically, I owe everything to the city of L.A. Here's my best year. Most challenging year, most fun year. Um, not sure when you're gonna play. Ups and downs. Guys been injured. Um, Where am I? Still finding my way in this locker room. First thing I told these guys is thank you for saving me. <sighs> He's like fighting back tears. Yep. And I appreciate. Him. I appreciate every guy in that locker room. I appreciate. Him. Paul for getting on our phone last year. Uh, at the end of the season, when it was time to go by with Detroit, thank for everything I've experienced being here. Uh, this city making me feel home. This organization. Now he's like literally got tears yeah. running down his face. Wow. Works. My strengths, my weaknesses. It's touching. I'm, not yeah. without this team. I'm still not playing without this team. Thank you for saving me to Paul George. That's probably maybe the biggest attribute you could give to Paul George is knowing that he was responsible for turning Reggie Jackson back into what we all wanted Reggie Jackson to be. He was up there back in the day. People were comparing him to J- John Wall. They were got, getting paid the same amount of money. Yeah. John Wall was unhappy that he was making Reggie Jackson money. Speedy point guards. Speedy yeah. point guards, able to slash, able to shoot. And you know what? Like, I think Reggie Jackson could end up getting $15 million a year, but I think he takes 10 to stay with the LA Clippers. Really? Because... That's the type of gratitude you have when someone's changed your entire life. You don't forget that. It never goes away. Ever, ever, ever. Maybe. I would respect the shit out of that. I hope he goes to a team that I hate a little bit less than the Clippers. He could go to Boston. There's going to be a place that wants him 
and I think we'll pay him. He went to what? Boston College, Boston University. He went to a school in Boston. I know that. Did he? Yeah. And so oh. uh, I know that they would welcome him back with open arms. But I think if you're Reggie Jackson, what you do is you stay, stay loyal. Uh, question. What's the difference between Trey Young and Patrick Beverly? Uh, Trey Young has offensive ability. Correct. But I would say <laughs> Trey Young's good. Trey Young is a good player. Reggie, I mean, uh, Patrick Beverly was cooking last night. He was. He cooking. Was, in the first half, especially. Yeah, no, 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 no. He had uh, cooking. Yeah, yeah. No, he made some like sick layups that were just like, what? But I, I've terms, never seen you do this. Ever. In terms of villainism, they both are now firmly implanted as the irritants of the leak. And truthfully, they have been diminished by the media. They have yeah. chips on their shoulders. Like, no way Pat Beverly is even in the league if he's not this guy. Uh -huh. Like, there are humans, I think actually, truthfully, I am one of these humans, where if I wasn't consistently clawing and fighting, I might not even be here. <laughs> I mean, I was in finance five years and made a pivot from a stockbroker to being a podcast host. You don't yeah, no, make I, that pivot yeah. without having some scrap. Yeah. I went to law school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to have either a very sweet uh, demeanor where everyone loves you, which is you, or <laughs> or being a pain in the ass and bouldering and moving your sharp elbows in, which is Pat Beverly. And that is me. Yeah. So I think he is now officially the heel of the NBA. I, I agree. And honestly, like I the Suns fan in me like wants to hate him and like get like definitely like Suns Twitter and like all of our fan base uh, sure as shit hates him. But I honestly like it kind of just makes me laugh at this point, like because he literally has just embodied that he just decided, like, I'm going to be the biggest piece of shit that has ever played basketball in the history of basketball. And like he hasn't swayed from it. He hasn't swayed from it. He got drafted in like 2008, I think 2008 or 2009. Pretty sure it's 2008. And that's what's made him his money. That's what made him his money is being that piece of shit. And like I don't even care that he pushed Chris Paul. I don't give a fuck. Like. Beverly, like as much as I like, don't like him when we're playing him. I do respect that man. I think when he's gone so over the top as who he is, like to the point of that shoving him to the ground, <laughs> like it's so <laughs> on brand, and he's literally <laughs> laughing as it happens. He has no like scowl on his face. Yeah. This is like he is enjoying the villain role, and I think at a certain point, if you're a viewer, you're like. I mean, this is kind of fun. Well, and that's what you do, like, as an irritant. Like, I've heard Rajah Bell talk about it, like, great Suns player back in the Nash years. Uh, he uh, said, like, I would, like, when I was playing, like, Kobe or, like, whoever the other, like, top shooting guards of that time, he was like, I spent the whole game, like, trying to get them in the mud because, obviously, they're above me. I spend the whole game, like, talking, trying to get them to come down to the mud, to my level, and it, it was just clear... Patrick Beverly, he just he just wasn't able to do that last night. And then he got frustrated and lashed out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's move on to Kawhi. Kawhi was finally back onto the bench. Yeah. yeah. No, he was supporting his teammates. Yeah. Shocker. So supporting yeah. his teammates in a closeout game in the city of L.A. I tell you what, Kawhi fans are worse than LeBron fans. They are <laughs> delusional. They were scraping and clawing. He has a baby. It was his birthday. He doesn't want to outstretch his leg. He has an ACL. He can't drive this, that. It was like whack a mole. It was like whack a mole with with Kawhi Leonard excuses, and it was like you're a clown. You're a, this is a clown podcast. You need to support him. But the truth of the matter is this: there is now news that had nothing to do with his baby, and like congratulations to Paul uh, to Kawhi Leonard on sure, his new baby. Certainly, Kawhi, congratulations to Nick Batum on his new baby. Happy for those who are having children in the middle of the playoffs. However, you have a job to do. And secondarily, that's not why he's not with his team. The reason that he's not with his team is now coming out. Apparently, he is unhappy with the training staff. He is unhappy with the way that they diagnosed his leg injury to begin with. The one that led to which is what is probably an ACL. Tear. I've never heard this story before. The Kawhi Leonard upset with medical staff. Wow. I've never. Yeah. This is an. It's brand new. Yeah. This is a <laughs> new 
would take. Kawhi has always trusted the advice of others. He has always <laughs> been steadfast in his ability to understand that there is a medical staff that's trying to do everything that they can to get him healthy. He's never looked for a second opinion. He's never gone away from his team before. He's never forced to trade before. He's never moved and, and shunned away from the organization before. This is all just shocking news to me. Yeah, no, just the teammate of all teammates, yeah. So um, our boy Skip Bayless says, I have been told by a very good source, so I don't even know what to make of it because it's Skip, <laughs> Skip Bayless. I've been told by a very good source that the first issue became Kawhi uh, was unhappy with the Clippers medical staff because he felt early on that they misdiagnosed and underplayed the extent of his early knee injury. What is this smack of? San Antonio all over again. Kawhi Leonard is on his own. Once he gets a little sideways, he's going to pull away. He's going to this doctor and that physical therapist and this <laughs> these people away from the team. Why is it that the team keeps saying we're not sure what his status is from game to game? Because Kawhi Leonard's not telling them what his status <laughs> is from game to game. I think that they're just not communicating at all with him. They're not sure what's going on. And now, Marty, the new news from Kevin O'Connor, according to him, the Mavericks and the Heat are planning to make a hard push in acquiring Kawhi Leonard. I mean, I, as they should. Uh I don't know. I mean, I think I said it on the, on the last episode or maybe the one before that. Like, I think Kyrie, I think Kawhi gets such a pass on his toxicity just because he's like quiet and he's embraced like that role. But he's as bad as like the most toxic guys that we talk about in the league. And, and, and like I say, like if imagine if LeBron or KD like didn't travel with their team for an elimination game that would have led off like. Uh, uh, get Alarm off first bells. take it would have let off literally every single sports show and Kawhi gets a complete pass for it I actually convinced my father who like has been a Kawhi fan like since like the Spurs days and like we're not Spurs guys by any by any stretch and I, I just I, I gave him the same take like I mean everyone gives him a complete pass and he was like yeah right. no I kind of hate Kawhi I guess I hate Kawhi like he I mean hate's a strong word but I, I think he's kind of a motherfucker my question is do you think he stays do you think he goes my main, I guess my main determining factor of this is really how injured he is. If he has yeah. a torn ACL, which people are speculating that he might, I think he hops in <laughs> for that year and then gets a completely away from the team. Yeah. And then they'll probably try to trade him and he'll, they'll get nothing back for him, basically, because Kawhi will have a torn ACL for an entire year. Right. And he'll just be rehabbing away from the team. Who knows yeah, where I mean, he'll he be? Yeah, he sure as shit won't travel. I mean, he didn't travel for an elimination game, so he's not going to be... He'll be nowhere. Yeah, he's not going to be riding the plane for 82 games. We know that. Apparently, yeah. uh, Kawhi has a great relationship with Nico Harrison. There's a chance that he would want to play with Luka. Uh, he also loved Jimmy Butler and was trying to recruit Jimmy Butler to come to the Clippers before he chose Paul George. Huh. So that is why folks are thinking like the Kevin O'Connors of the world, that there's a possibility that Kawhi does that. Also, there's a p potential that the Knicks would pursue him um, in some list of trade. Um, I don't know. We'll so have he's to see. A, he's a player option this year? Yes. So he could be a free agent this year if he ch chooses Correct. so. Yes. Well, I mean, that could that could, that could be a serious, uh, <laughs> serious wave starter. <laughs> <laughs> Player options, they're a motherfucker. <laughs> they're a motherfucker. Speaking of motherfuckers, yeah. we must talk about this fucking GM, Neil O'Shea. This is a... <laughs> well, first of all, let me just talk about... Let's actually back up. Back, uh, let's back up. Yeah. Let's talk about the, I mean, the we gotta series. We got to talk about we it. We got to yeah. talk about this. The Hawks and the Bucks. Okay. Got to talk about that. Okay. You Like you, everyone is saying, well, Giannis is injured. What's going to happen? This is awful for the league. And it is awful for the league. And it is awful for the Bucks. No structural damage. That no was, structural damage. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, fingers crossed, literally. Like, I, I hope, hope he's fine. I hope, he's, he, fine. I hope he's good. But this team has no fight. This team <sighs> is exactly who I thought that they were in January. This is the take. This is the firm take that I'm putting into my... I'm putting my feet into the sand. And I'm not moving them from now on. I think... That the ups and downs of the Bucks, one, make them the hardest team in the league to bet. 
for this reason. <laughs> Hardest team in the league to bet. You yeah. never know who they're going to be. Yeah, no, and you yeah. never know who they're going to be because they don't know how to handle real adversity, especially adversity on the road. Why? Because they are no dogs on that team. Maybe Drew, but Drew is not the guy that's going to come in, put his foot on your fucking neck and take advantage and say, you know what? We need to go up 3-1 on these fools. They allowed the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young. They allowed Lou Williams to come in. Lou Williams is going to (laughs) retire. Lou Williams was ready to Reggie Jackson and retire. Lou Williams was in the league when I was in eighth grade. Okay. So you feel me. (laughs) Lou Williams is interested in Magic City and lemon pepper wings and fucking chillaxing. And he put 20 something on your head. You couldn't lock down Lou Williams. This team is soft. And you know what? I'm tired of me wavering. Like, I see them play so well. They beat a team by 50. And I'm like, I don't know. There maybe, maybe I was wrong. No. No. The whole reason that they go up and down is exactly why I'm right. They are, they are, they do not have that DNA. Yeah. I mean, and like, uh, I mean, the Giannis injury certainly like, like through it. And it, it, they were we, going to lose. Without we spoke off air. Yeah, you told me this. Injured. And like, I, I kind of think they were too. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I was very unimpressed with the Bucks. I mean, there's, there's so much you could say, but I, I guess the best word that I could come up with is unimpressed and uninspired. And I think Budenholzer is a bad coach. It's very clear that he's bad. Yeah. It's very clear that he's not doing this team. And if you can't get up, do you know if it was like, if it was Ty Lue, even Ty Lue's down, I think 15 at one point, And they had like the inside tracks with Ty Lue. And he's like, these fools can't play with us. You need to keep going. They can't keep up with I know us. That, I, yeah, da, I know they can't beat us. Yeah, They da, da, da. can't beat us. They can't. And it's like, yeah, they can. And, but you want someone like Ty Lue to come in and give you delusions yeah. of grandeur. Yeah. If you're Giannis, it's like, keep shooting, Giannis. Keep doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can we shout out Ty Lue for two seconds? Like, I just. I, Top I, three coaching I, league. I, I want to give Ty Lue his flowers. Like, I talked a lot of shit. Uh, I was very wrong. I was very wrong. I think honestly, like what I said about Ty Lue probably deserves more roasting than anything that's been said on this entire podcast since we started it. Me and you, uh, Nate McMillan, Ty Lue, we were so wrong. He just showed the ability to adjust. Uh, he, he threw a zone at us. He literally did everything he could to get that hobbled Clippers team to where they were with us. And I mean, damn, like they, they really put up a fight and I did Ty Lue, I think he, I think he threw away all the shit that people have said, like, oh, he like needed LeBron to do it. Like Ty Lue, congrats, bro. Congrats. And congrats to Nate McMillan because he has these boys believing that they are the top, a top two team in the league. Yeah. He has them believing these Bucks don't want to go with you without Trey Young. I mean, think about what they're going to be doing in Milwaukee now. They know. They know. <sighs> it's like all we have to do is like continue. Most likely Giannis isn't going to maybe play. It's time for the Atlanta Hawks to go to the fucking finals. Nate McMillan has them believing. And you know what? If it wasn't Nate McMillan, it was Lloyd Pierce, they would, Pierce, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs. And really, if it was someone yeah. like Budenholzer, they would just be flopping like a cheap suit. Yeah, I wonder I wonder what this series would have looked like. I mean, this is like a little off topic, but like say Philly had won that game seven, like what this series would be right now. Would it be 2-2? I don't know. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah. It's hard to say, but holy fuck, dude. Atlanta, I, they just look really good. I like them. I, I love John Collins. I love John Collins a lot. I think he's the perfect four in this league. I think what you're going to see is an NBA fans dream scenario. Yeah. Like I think Hawks Suns is a real fans dream. If you love the game of basketball, that's what this is. Yeah. Two like, give underdogs. Me, give me all the takes about like, oh, it's markets that no one cares about. And like speaking of, okay, like this is like, actually it's not off topic at all. It's exactly the topic that we're on. But <laughs> <laughs> like everyone wants to say like, oh, like it's small market. Like Phoenix, Phoenix is like the sixth biggest city in the country. Same thing with Atlanta. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean their fans like aren't really get it. So I get it a little more with Atlanta. But like basically when NBA fans say like, oh, small market, they're really only saying like there's three cities in America that matter. And it's stupid. And it's stupid. Yeah. And it's stupid. I think Atlanta Hawks end up closing this thing out. Uh, I hope Giannis is okay. I hope there's nothing wrong with him. I hope that he comes back better than ever. um, And that 
There's literally nothing actually wrong, but I wouldn't hate to see Giannis be out for the rest of the series and just to be like cautious. And again, nothing wrong with him and him to be out the rest of the series so the Hawks can go. I don't I wanna, want to see the I Bucks want, I want him to play. I, I want him to play. I'm praying for Giannis. Praying for Giannis. Prayers up for Giannis. Pro Giannis podcast. Okay. Near and dear to my heart. This topic. This one's less fun. Snake! Snake! <laughs> S- ah! Snake! Neil Olshay is now the new Danny Ainge. Cannot be trusted. <laughs> lies constantly. Swindles everyone constantly. Has done nothing of note and somehow is continuing to rely on drafting CJ and Dame. It's the only thing you've done well. You threw fucking Terry Stotts under the bus and said it was just him. The roster was just fine. You were going to do 20 to 25 coaches in a search. Did not. And now, and now everyone knows you're fucking snake. Jordan Schultz is this guy. Do you know Jordan Schultz? I know Jordan, yeah. Jordan Schultz is a... NBA media member, but also the key thing that you need to know about Jordan Schultz is that he co-hosts a podcast with CJ McCollum. Yeah. Pause. Hey, let that sit in. <laughs> he's, he's with CJ McCollum like you and I are on the daily, uh-huh. which means when he floats out an opinion, his co-host, an NBA player would be like, nah, nah, that's not true. Or yes, yes, that is true. Even if that's off camera. So when he says that, Neil Olshay is a joke and that Neil Olshay is not well regarded with anyone I've spoken with. And CJ is constantly saying, I have been told by Neil Olshay I'm not going to be traded. Neil Olshay is a fucking snake. Yeah. Snake. S- snake. <laughs> Apparently, Jordan also said Neil Olshay mucked this coaching search up from the get go. Better believe his reputation has taken a hit among league circles as well. Players around the league will take note. Dame is as respected as they come. He deserves so much, so much better. And Neil Olshay poisoned the well. Let's talk about the Chauncey Billups yeah. presser. <sighs> I would call it the Yikes. ultimate nail in the coffin. Chauncey Billups is announced as head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, Wow, his team is in the Western Conference Finals. He flies to Portland to be to face the music. Really, he was ready. (laughs) That's what it felt like. I mean, it's so the music, yeah. And to once and for all answer questions about 1997 and the issues that Chauncey Billups has been has has gone through, and to say I've learned from whatever 97 was and was going to answer any questions. And as soon as someone said, Jason Quick, longtime Portland Trailblazers reporter, pretty respected in the game. Mm-hmm. Neil Olshay, by the way, fucking can't stand Jason Quick. Really? Okay. He has said that like multiple times. Doesn't he, want Jason anywhere near him. He knows Jason Quick's trying to get to the truth. He's been there like forever. Forever. Or, okay. He was with the Oregonian before okay. and then like now he's with the athletic. So, okay. They have a history fr- since Neil Olshay got there. Uh-huh. Jordan, uh, Jason Quick says, okay, you've learned from 97. What have you learned? And then (sighs) Neil O'Shea goes. Yep. (laughs) Looks over, takes a swig of his water, looks over at the PR person who is there. It's her first day on the job. (laughs) And she's like, um, we're not going to answer any questions on this right now. Uh, that's, that's enough of that. No more questions about 1997. And then Neil follows it up with, we c- conducted a rigorous investigation, uh, which is proprietary. You're just going to have to trust us. It really did feel like, uh, that was her first day. I mean, literally just like, <laughs> let's like, okay. Like, oh, like can't handle that pressure. Like we'll, we'll figure this out later. Like I'll take the hit like right now. Yeah, no, it was. I, I mean, it was just a terrible look. There's nothing else you could really say. It was, it was one of the worst things. You, I mean, I guess like letting him answer would have been. I would have preferred that. Sure. He like, was ready to do it. He came in prepared to discuss it yeah. so that they can move on. And now there is, like Portland has as a, as a city, a little storm cloud that's going to follow this organization everywhere they go. Yeah. I mean, it's going to pollute his whole like Five coaching year tenure, tenure right i mean like how i, I think he's gonna have to say something on his own probably i mean like, like it, that's just that's such a big i mean 
cloud, matzo ball, whatever you want to call it. Like that's such a big matzo thing ball. hanging over you. Yeah. That like, was just such indicative of, of you, the matzo ball. Okay. I just never. <laughs> and now everyone's thinking, okay, well, why'd you hire Chauncey? Apparently you loved Becky Hammond, Jody Allen, the sister of former rest in peace to Paul Allen, Microsoft co-founder who is the owner of the Seattle Seahawks and the Portland Trailblazers passed away and he gave the Trailblazers to his sister, Jody Allen. Yeah. Jody Allen apparently loved Becky Hammond. Yeah. I mean, why who, wouldn't you? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Apparently. She honestly is lovely. Like, she's uh, a very lovely like, person. Beyond her qualifications, I think she's a very cool person. So then everyone's like, Chauncey, why Chauncey? You had Becky right there. She's a perfect candidate. Da, da, da. And then, of course, this is where Neil O'Shea really is a fucking snake. He starts floating out to the media that they did some background on Becky and that ultimately her credentials weren't all that respectable as you would think. So hmm. this is the this is the quote from Blazer's PR. Okay. Fuck. Hammond impressed Portland officials and was generally liked among Portland staffers. Pause. Generally liked is a is a a word used on purpose. Yeah. Generally, generally liked. Generally, yeah. Not overwhelmingly liked, generally liked. But when Portland reached out for intel from San Antonio figures, the background on Hammond was not nearly as complimentary pertaining to various aspects of day-to-day coaching responsibilities. That sentiment was echoed by sources around the league. Blazers personnel then cast doubt on Hammond and whether she was the candidate to steer the ship through such delicate waters with Lillard. Mm. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never heard anything about that. Because it's not true. Yeah. Because it's not true. Portland is so desperate to figure out some, to hang on to something about why they chose Chauncey. Over. Over him. <laughs> And they did that? It really is funny. They made like they could have made like the best PR hire of all time and they instead made like the worst <laughs> PR hire of all time. For a comedy podcast, it is pretty fucking funny. And then they're like, she wasn't that good though, bro. Like everybody yeah. said she was like not even that good in the day to day. Like it's like just hitting me. They literally the the, the the swing between those two hires is so big. This guy from the Spurs as a writer said that this was he was highly skeptical. Of this report. Uh He says, this doesn't exactly sound like San Antonio culture to me. Like San Antonio doesn't let a thing out. You think they're going to like bury Becky Hammond when she's being, they know what that's going to turn into. It's going to get public. It's going to get ugly and it's going to make it look really bad when they hire her as the head coach. They would never do that. (laughs) Never do that ever in a million years do that. He said this entire report, quote unquote report, just reeks to me of a desperate team trying to pass, explain away passing up the perfect candidate for a former player with a trouble past. I mean, this is why Neil Olshay is a snake, (sighs) snake. All he cares about is himself. All he cares about is trying to remain employed. Seems that way. And Jody Allen is spineless. She is completely out of pocket for letting this report get out for not putting her foot to the ground and being like, we need to hire this woman. She wanted Becky Hammond. She let the snake snake choose his guy. The truth is they were never going to hire Becky Hammond. They were never going to hire Don Staley. They were never going to hire Jason Kidd. It was always Chauncey. It was Chauncey before Terry Stotts was kicked out of the door. Every time Neil Olshay did an interview about Damian Lillard, All he did was compare Damian Lillard to Chauncey Billups. Every single time. He has (laughs) Chauncey Billups photos in his fucking office. Like, that is his guy. It was always going to be Chauncey. And the most terrible thing about this is they could have just said nothing at all. We did our background on Chauncey. We wanted Chauncey. We thought that a former finals MVP would connect with our guy who we think could be an MVP. And that's the end. They didn't need to bury Becky Hammond in the process. And now you have fucking idiots like Fox News coming out and and saying that Becky Hammond is not qualified to be a head coach because her former or current employer does not have resounding praise for her. 
and that we are now as a culture too interested in hiring minorities, whether that be people of color or women that are less qualified and that we need to take a hard look at ourselves. Fuck that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's just so much. And like there's a lot that can be said for like the meritocracy and like, are we really like interviewing and hiring the right people? Becky Hammond is not someone you can say that about. She's been uh, Greg Popovich assistant coach for like seven seasons. I think DeMar DeRozan said when she speaks, we listen. She's one of us. DeJounte Murray. Both of those guys are hard rocks. They come from nothing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They respect Becky. Yeah. No, uh, there is, basically, I guess what I'm saying is there's people you can say that about. Becky Hammond is not one of those people. And if you're going to try to throw her name into that, fuck you. You're a fucking idiot. And you know what this also does is it just gives fuel to the people who already believe that women can't coach. I had lunch with an agent this week, and he said he doesn't think that a woman could ever be a head coach of an NBA team because he doesn't think that players will ever respect her. Eesh. And that just... Reports like that just add fuel and make it harder for people like Becky and people like Dawn and Teresa Weatherspoon and Carl Lawson to ever be at the height of their career in this field. And it's just a damn shame. And I've been a Portland Trailblazer fan for 31 years and I am about ready if Dame decides to bounce and they continue to keep Neil on the books. I'm about ready to go in a dark period. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what I'll talk about. We Are you going to be talk, out? You're going to be out? We won't talk about the Blazers again. We won't <laughs> talk about them. Promise you that. 30, 29 teams in the NBA. Like, I might just not watch them. That's tough for a hardcore NBA fan. Say what you will about me, but that you got to draw the line somewhere. Snake! <laughs> all that smoke coming out around Dallas. The question, though, now, with all of the new news, Brian Windhorst, my guy, Talking, spitting that shit. Is Luca actually the problem in Dallas? Is it actually Luca? I don't think anybody could have ever seen this. We knew that there, there were problems. It looked like the, da- the Dallas Mavericks were going to beat the Clippers. They were going to go on to the second round. They were a comeback story. They were a cuspy team. Cuspy. I, mean, I was thinking at some point, like a month ago, like the Mavs might go to the finals. Right. Like that was literally a thought I had. Cuspy yeah. team. Yeah. They were the ones bitching about the play in. Like we didn't know. And then it looked like they were unbeatable. They beat the Clippers twice in L.A. Yeah. They were could have been up 3-0. It's just one of those things. And now Donnie Nelson then gets fired for leaking out information about how fucked up things are. Rick Carlisle went from being one of the most longstanding prestigious coaches to being fired and having problems with his assistant coach, Jamal Mosley. Jamal Mosley went from being the most liked coach at the assistant level in the in the league, probably especially in Dallas, having a tremendous relationship with Luca to having thinking he was going to be the head coach, not getting the head coaching job, and then fucking leaving. You got another guy, I forget his name, our car service, I forget how to pronounce his name. Yep. Getting into fights with Luca. He remains employed. Then you have a former Nike executive coming in, Nico, very respected, Jason Kidd, with his checker pass. He gets the head coaching job. I mean, it's just so many things, and you're like, poor Luca. Poor Luca. He deserves better than this. And then... And then, tisk tisk. Brian Windhorst went on the radio and said, "said this. Ugh, I don't know how many people are going to be excited to play with Luca. I think Luca's maybe a difficult person. He's a great p- player, but when you watch the Mavericks play, he's barking at the coach. He's barking at his teammates. He's barking at the officials. He's always barking about something. He can be a really irritable guy. So I wonder, is Luca the common denominator of all the Dallas Mavericks problems, Marty? What do you say? Uh, well, first thing I'll say is, how's that DeAndre Ayton pick looking right now? Uh, second, uh, I mean, yeah, I buy it. I buy it. And I don't normally like uh, go along with everything Windhorse says, but I mean, everything he just said in that is accurate. He's always yelling. He's always angry. Uh, He like publicly uh, threw uh, uh, Chris Stapps under the bus a little bit. Yeah. And publicly. And like, if you don't like playing with a certain player, that's fine. I don't think you need to like that, but like to go at it publicly, I don't love. And uh, yeah, no, I kind of buy it. I kind of buy that Lucas kind of falls into this like Gen Z, like, 
toxic NBA player. He's maybe like the first of a new wave. First of a new wave when you are the MVP of the Euro League. Yeah. And you're at 18. And 18 and you're a phenom. You are feeling yourself. Yeah. You can tell that Luca doesn't take care of his body. You can take <laughs> care that you can tell that Luca thinks he is the best thing since sliced bread and you know what? He is very good. Oh, he's yeah. very good. <laughs> Again, I had that lunch with the agent, and that's what he he said the exact same thing as Win Horse the really? day before this Win Horse piece came out. He was like, Luca's a pain in the ass, bro. Like, you'll take Luca, of course, because he's that good and he's better than Trey. And so they did the right thing, but it's it's not an ideal scenario, and it's gonna be tough sledding for the Dallas Mavs. Yeah, no, and I think it's a little generational, and it's honestly kind of funny because of all the shit that like like boomers gave like LeBron and KD. Like, I think it's about to get so much worse like, oh with all these God. NBA players. <laughs> yeah, man. When you've got the fucking islands of <laughs> your home country on your back and you're yeah. selling your guys and your team and you're yelling at everyone and you don't like any, any hire that they've had other than the guys that brought you in. <sighs> Just things you hate to see. Just <laughs> things you hate to see. Uh, that is all the time that we have for the This League podcast. We got in and out. Please subscribe. Please rate. Please review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It makes a huge difference. We are growing. I think we're up to 1,500 YouTube followers right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are up to 76,000 TikTok subscribers, 3.7 million likes. Thank you to everyone. Uh, we have This League playoff merch on sale. We, there's Suns gear on there. It's a pro Suns podcast. I'm going to be Always. rocking. Please follow us during our run in the NBA finals. Me and Mari are going to be places. It's going to be fucking scorching hot. I'm so excited. And the Suns are going to be hotter. <laughs> the Suns are going to be hotter. Suns are going to be NBA champions. Thank you for listening. Tune in Monday for the next episode of This League. <laughs>